Okay, we, I think we are starting right now. So nice to see you at my talk. Take your seats. So it's going to be Lambda Court Hardcore. My name is Jarek Ratajski and yeah, it's nice to be here. So about me, I just live under this beautiful mountain in, among the dwarves. There was even a dragon before. And yeah, like I'm developer, wizard, and an architect. Uh, maybe better if I show you written this way. And I started my programming with Commodore 64. And basically, uh, that's all my Pokemons. Maybe not all, but how I call them. I work for the small company Ingenious. By the way, do you know what is an architect? That's my role. I love it because I think the world has too many architects. And what architects do, they bring order to your projects. They bring rules. If you have many rules to follow, you can't code anymore. So I basically break the rules, break, bring chaos, so that at least something can be done. It's really, if I'm working for banking and insurances, it's really needed role. Oh, okay. Okay, agenda for today. Uh, uh, what is Lambda? Because we are on a conference that even has this Lambda symbol in a logo. And we talk about Lambda expressions, whatever, in a lot of languages, but do you ever, who knows what is Lambda? Raise your hands. Couple of hands, to, especially it's those, for those of you that don't, do not know and want to know more what is the origin of this term. And we'll be basically doing something funny, reinventing the mathematics. Which, what else can we do? And we'll be doing that with Lambda calculi in Scala. So my idea is to show you some maths, but in a way that you can even later debug it. It's always fun to debug something. And then we'll just talk a little bit about consequences. Okay, so, uh, yes, well, um, just imagine that one day you land on a deserted island, okay? You have nothing, there's the deserted island, maybe there, are some, there is some stuff there, but you want to take care about yourself, about food, about water, uh, place to sleep, things like that. What would you like to have with you? Uh, something. What, what, what would you like to have in order to be to survive there? You, what? Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's the best answer I've ever had. But so let's imagine there is <laughs> simply no Wi-Fi on the island. Then what? Okay. So as I live in Switzerland, the best answer would be probably this Swiss Army knife, but. You know, the problem is if you, for instance, survey, so survived a disaster, error disaster, that it's been, you can't take it on board. You can't always carry it with you. So the problem is maybe there is a better tool that you can always carry with you. So the, there is such tool. Mathematics, of course, because it's, you know, that's somehow the queen of sciences, I would say even mother of all engineering. If you have, if you have maths with you, then the world is yours. Simply it's a matter of time. So the problem with maths is that it's like, quite heavy if you want to take all your books, still you have a problem with the luggage you can take on board. Yeah, so that's maybe we can do something smart with maths that we can just take very small, tiny part of mathematics and that will be enough. Because you know, in maths, when you have some basic rules, then you can recreate everything yeah, from, from, from bottom to top. So. And so the, this nice thing is lambda. And we'll, talking, we'll be talking about it's like a, as a building block of mathematics. So just uh, we we'll, can create with lambda everything. How? Be OK, by the way, who knows how the classical mathematics was created? What was the building block of the classical mathematics? Sets, exactly, the th set theory. And this set theory worked for ages. OK, ages. It's, even in the moment it was like um, uh, the, the people de designed the principles, it showed up, it's, this theory is working, it's very intuitive, but it has some paradoxes. It wasn't, so it was like a, my typical project in IT. At the beginning it's very clean, I will use these three libraries and everything is perfect. Then comes the business with the more requirements and suddenly my project is not elegant anymore, it's, it's just a mess. So the same happened with set theory. It was very, very intuitive and small at the beginning, and then with every paradox the mathematicians found, it was nastier. At the end, if you look at the set theory, you'll see that there are like six very intuitive uh, axioms, so like building blocks, 
how to, to, to get numbers and everything. And then like seven, very strange. You, you don't even get what is this about. So maybe there is a different way to create mathematics and lambda is the way like, don't talk about sets. Let's talk about something better, the functions. So what is a lambda is very simple thing that is a function that takes another function and returns function. Basically it takes lambda, returns lambda. What else? So we can create the world just with just lambdas, the mathematics. So uh, how we define it? Uh, if you go to Wikipedia, whatever, you will see that symbol. Lambda x is just because they needed some symbol. Lambda x dot and then some expression. So it's like a function from x to something. And in this expression, we write what we are going to do with this x. And by the way, still remember, x is always a lambda, another function. We don't have any other objects in this universe. So uh, what we can do with lambdas is, of course, define them like that. And the second operation we can do is apply lambdas. Because if, if we have lambdas, so we have function, what else can the function do? It's eager to be applied with something. So like this. Uh, by the way, the parentheses are not, br brackets are not really ne needed, but I write them, sometime, write them sometimes to make it clear what I'm thinking about. So we have like some kind of lambda that I know under the symbol x, and then I apply with some other lambda, other function with symbol y. That's it. So that's the building block of the mathematics. And if you are going to explain that to a Scala developer, it's like this. It's possible to explain that in Java world, in C. It's always like that. We have some kind of interface. Let's call it lambda. We have a one function, apply, takes lambda, returns lambda. Can't be easier. OK. It's not, thank you. So <laughs> that's my engine for presentation. So let's imagine you are on this deserted island with Scala. OK? Just you are with Scala compiler, but you don't have jars from internet. So no jars from internet. The SBT doesn't work. Only compiler. You don't have uh, Scala collections. You have no Scala utilities. You don't even have those. Don't have Boolean in nothing. Whatever you can imagine, Stack Overflow doesn't, doesn't work for you. <laughs> there, there is one exception, what you can use. Uh, what I will be using, it's not needed to make all this thing working. It's only needed to make it visible. I'm using my small package. I call it Badlam. It's from Lambda somehow, but bad ones. It's to present a Lambda written in Scala in some mathematical way, just only that. And uh, once I will be using that, but remember it's not needed to make all this thing working. It's only to present. Okay, so let me show you that. So if I'm writing here, what, for, what is the first lambda I can create easily? Identity, of course. So if I write it like that, bam, 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 identity, it's like this. And I am going to print it. So right now you see how I'm, how I'm using my package. Okay, so it's like, let's wait till the SBT starts in the background. It will be faster later, but for the beginning, it's oh, please, 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 do it, do it, do it. Okay, so you've seen the identity is displayed this way: lambda from x dot the printed some x. Okay, it's working. So, and now the problem: we are stuck. Can we, can we write other lambda somehow? Anybody has idea? Or what can we do with identity? Oh, I have idea what can I do with identity, okay? I can write like that. So let me val id2. I write it with identity. It's like, even I can write it apply, or maybe like this, identity. Why not? And then I will even display it, okay? So like this, and I will display this id2. Ta-da! Oh, sorry. I did to what, what I did wrong. Uh, sorry? Uh, sorry, okay. I, I would. If, okay, identity. Ident oh, I see it. Okay, you see. Sorry. I am so bad at this. Okay, you see it works, it works, but it's still we are very, uh, we are very limited to things we can do, okay? It's like, 
uh, if I play with this identity for next half of hour, you won't be that satisfied, I bet. So what other lambda can I create? And there is a nice trick, because it's really, if you can't use all those booleans, natural numbers, whatever, it's hard, but there is one nice trick. I will show you. Let me do this funny lambda like this. Just look at that. Strange stuff, OK? What is this? I, take, I created a lambda that takes some x and returns what? Returns another lambda that takes some y and completely ignores that and still returns x uh, when it, if applied with something. So what we have here is a nice trick. You know the name of this trick a little bit? What? OK, so there are different names, but very basically let's call it carrying. So let's, we have a function of two arguments. And we presented this as a function that takes one argument and returns another function that takes another argument. So finally, it's like function from x and y that returns something. And basically, this function uh, takes the first argument, ignores the second, returns this. So it's like more advanced identity. It's identity on the first argument and ignores the second one. I call it funny because, of course, it's so funny. So funny lambda. OK, it's like this. So let me play a little bit more. So this is the another lambda. And you see where's the difference with this lambda and the previous one? You, who, who sees the difference? Is there any? There is no difference, by the way. Very important things about lambdas. How I call the symbols doesn't matter. By the, by the way, my package. Uh, displays any lambda with x, y, z, and I can even tell, use different letters. It doesn't matter which letters I used as a symbols. It's, for lambdas, it's only the structure is important. So those two are completely the same. So uh, let me, so just a name is intri intriguing, a true, because if I define this lambda, a false, you should see some difference. The false is a little bit different. Yes? Right now, I have a function that takes some x, then returns what? You know this second part. What is this? Tell me, tell me. It has a name. We have it above. Yeah, it's a function that takes x and returns identity function, identity lambda. So that, that easy. So, and we call it false, and it's not coincidence. By the way, it's just a convention which names are used. This is the convention you will see in Wikipedia later. OK. That's all Scala, and now I am creating something more intriguing. And lambda. So and, again, that's not coincidence, how it's called. And maybe important part, I'm used, I've used here a WebP function. It means simply display it, but with a P symbols. So if I, if I haven't used this P, it would be displayed like X, Y, Z, but, um, but in Wikipedia, on all the mathematical sources, you will see it always with P and Q. So I'm making it easy for you using this WebP function, which basically displays it consistently to, to mathematical sources. OK, so we have this end. And might be that you had idea what I'm going to do right now. I have three intriguing lambdas, true, a true, a false, and an end. Yeah, that's pun intended. I'm writing like this, a false and a true. So. As you remember, n is a lambda that takes some p, takes some, then returns other lambda that takes some q, and then does this operation, p applied with q, and then later with, uh, with p again. So I will just display this result. OK. Do it. Ah, it didn't. So uh, you see that the result of and and a false and a true is what? A false, that's, so might be that it's working, will be better if I maybe change it to a true. Okay, ta-da, right now it's true. So I, and again, I can be even more funny if I put funny here. What I get? True, so Whenever this end is applied to something that has a structure of true, and again, second the, uh, f function that again has the structure of true, it returns true. If it's applied with a, uh, something and false, then and two or two falses, it will 
return something that has a structure of false. So it's like working, and so we we can say that we are right now starting the Boolean calculus with just symbol of lambda, no, nothing really there. So we are just doing, uh, sorry, it's like uh, this. Or lambda to make it complete. I will display it. This is or, and what can I do with or? I will just print it. Or and a false and a true. Okay, result two, and Okay, let's just, just see what, how R works. Oh, if I use it with a false and a true, I get, got something that, yeah, it's true. So it's working and I won't waste your time. It will be working, you can play on your own, it's very easy code. And yeah, that's what, that is so cool, the lambda calculus, the rules, it works, that it even works without a computer. It's the best language, the minimal. It's, even though you can try it with Scala to make it easier for you, but okay, uh, maybe this, function, it's called not, so not false, and I am going to display it, not a false, okay, yes. So, and even more, just, just to show you, I've created even in this package something that I can, uh, I can uh, change the um, boolean from, from this lambda calculus to the JVM boolean, but just utility function moment, I will make it smaller, uh, and let me just show you that not works. Not false is true, and if I convert it to JVM boolean, that's just utility function to make it better visible. Later we're gonna use such conversions and more. Yeah. So we've created, that one can say we've created boolean calculus out of nothing. Just having the ability to define function and apply function, nothing more. So define function as a variable with a name, that's all, also important part. So can we go deeper? Can we do something more interesting because Boolean calculus is kind of an yeah, easy task. So yes, we can. And let me show you this lambda. Once again, you have to tell me what is this. Okay, I'll, I'll display it zero, as zero. By the way, it's still convention. So zero, but you've seen this zero before. On, how was it called? False. And even though I use different names, it still has the same structure. So it means basically that C developers, C mm, inventors were right. False is zero. Okay, that's just a convention. So you can use other structures. You can even uh, mm, totally replace false and true and define other uh, Boolean calculus with other definition of and. It would work. That's just a standard convention. So there is a, also a standard convention called church encoding, how we define natural numbers with functions. So that's the standard convention of defining zero, and you will see, for instance, how, how is one defined this way, and how is two defined, and maybe you will get the point how this encoding work, looks like, because it's, you should see the scheme, that's quite easy, so zero is like that, one is like that, and two is so. As many times f is applied to x is uh, what number we are going to represent. That's very handy convention, and still it's convention that is working. You will find it in Wikipedia, not the only one. Just, uh, just uh, very basic. Okay, so if we have this, we can easily define this lambda, successor. And if you look at the definition, it's what it does, it takes n, so one of those Lambdas, one uh, lambda that is representing already a number, then takes f and x, and then returns other lambda. That's at the end is a, a lambda of two arguments, I would say, even though lambda, remember, is only, always takes one argument, but with caring we can think it, of it as having, in fact, two. So, so we have successor. What is funny, we have one consistent way of displaying everything. So we display operations and numbers with the same function, because our operations are lambdas, our numbers are lambdas. So it's very, very elegant formalism where the only one, I would say, building block exists. So it's not that much to remember. That's, that's why you should think of it like taking to, with yourself on board if you are just want, want to be safe against, you know, air, aircraft de 
uh, disaster or whatever. Okay, so we have this successor working, so successor of one you see is looking like two. It's so, but it was easy. Let's do something more interesting. Okay, successor of 10, it's like, oh, by the way, I have utility function that takes integer from Scala, uh, from whatever, JVM, and returns me a uh, representation as lambda. And you see it's working, how many Fs? Okay, because I'm going to use that, but I don't like to type that many Fs. So I can define plus. Now it's going to be interesting. Plus looks like this. So you can think of a moment, let me, hmm, make it bigger for you. So it takes some m, must be this cardinal number uh, as defined before with, then takes an n, so n is also a function of two arguments, f and x, and then takes f and then takes x and then returns with this expression something, okay? And if we see, okay, we can display it, of course. Right now I'm using this web m, it means please display it with m n symbol so that it will be like in Wikipedia, and then Okay, I'm constructing a and b from integer, that's my utility function that takes integer from JVM and returns, so it is in, in, in a, as a lambda uh, function with uh, just applications of f. So it's, I could as well write here such many f's as before, but I don't want to. So I will only display it to prove you that it's true what I'm talking, and now I'm going to print plus A and B. So just take a moment and you see, so we have A, one, two, three, four, it was six, we have B, we, it was seven Fs, and if we, if, we, if we use this operation looking like that, plus, we got this number, right? you can count for me how many Fs are there, because that would be the number. So I can, I can tell you just trust me, it's 13, so it's, it's working really, and we can go farther, okay, I can, I can convert it uh, to integer, so because I don't like counting that much, I, I studied maths, I hate numbers, all of them, really. By the way, the only way in your life, if you are afraid of numbers, I am very afraid of numbers, just study math, that is cool because that's the only place on earth when you only meet zero, one, I, and P, that's all. All other numbers are not interesting. Okay, E also, so that's, that's, a, that's a trick. Hack, okay. Multiplication, as you see, it's even easier to write, to define as a plus operation. So, oops, uh, I go here. So we'll use this multiplication. I, I'm going to reuse those symbols A and B, and okay, that's all I wanted to show. So, ta -da multiplication of uh, A and B, so six and seven is that many Fs, and you see it's 42. So if it's 42, it means it was working correctly. Okay, so, okay. You've seen, once again, on a deserted island, having only the abstract concept of defining uh, function and apply, applying function, I could recreate the normal mathematics, the basics, the natural numbers, and if you, where in the school, you know that if you have natural numbers, all the rest comes easily. So I, go, I won't go to this part, but because natural numbers, to create natural numbers is the most complicated. But can we do something more in interesting? So, of course, if I'm talking like that, we can. So, just for a moment, think this is NI, NI9, and we'll define predecessor operation. So, we could go, like, successor was easy. What, how to define predecessor? So if I have, and I, how, how can I have eight? How can I make automatically eight of that? It was in fact very complicated, and this thing probably it's best if you make a tattoo of that or whatever, because if you are, uh, quite honestly, if you land on this deserted island, it would be hard for you. It will, can take you a couple of days to recreate that just from, from head, because it took also clean uh, a little bit of time it looks like this, oh my god, oh. So, you see, it's, it doesn't look nice, but nevertheless, it's working. So, I can display this processor again, I'm just displaying the operation, and then uh, I'm displaying a nine, and I'm displaying a nine minus minus, so how it's applied, da da da. Okay, let's see if it works. Yeah, seemed to work because we got one F less. 
So it's, we have something now more int interesting and we go even deeper. So now that's interesting. If lambda, what is if lambda? Take some C, okay, sorry. Take some C that is a condition. So it's something that in fact must return true or false, true or false as previously defined. And then take some, some other lambda that is, uh, that is uh, going to describe what, what if this condition is true that I'm going to do T, or if it's false, I'm going to do F, and then the definition is like that, because we, it looks like that because we have to apply it at one moment. So it's, now it's interesting. We not only we can represent numbers and operation, we also can represent expressions from algorithms. So if, the, well, I would say the basic building block of algorithms. So then, having this if lambda, maybe we need some kind, some couple of conditions, so maybe that's interesting condition. It's called is zero. So what it does simply, if I get this n number, which must be the cardinals as defined before, I return uh, true if it was zero or false otherwise. By the way, this boolean is not a boolean from Scala or JVM, it's my boolean and false lambda is simply a uh, constant that defines with a, as a lambda false and then later a true, so we can reuse that just to make it easy. So we have like alternative mathematical package there, but it's working. So now it's funny, I, I mark it with begging mathemat magical math. Because what I'm going to write here is the, one of the most interesting parts in the lambda calculus. The first function is just, I would say, very unpolite. If you look at this function, how could you, you even think about it? This, it's like one step above identity. Takes x and return x applied with x. I call it very unpolite because it's someone goes to you and tells, says you do it, and you says no, do it to yourself. So like. Oh my God, okay, nevertheless it's useful. So then with this, we can create something looking like that. Okay, and this Y, who knows what this Y represents? Yes, exactly, so, and what is Y combinator? Okay, so the thing is, if you start to do real algorithms with, uh, with lambda calculus, very quickly you find out, you will find out that something like recursion isn't easy. Why it's not easy? Okay, because if you define function, inside of this function you can always refer to the name of the function. You can, you can call, you can, you define function, I don't know, Fibonacci, and then you can use symbol Fibonacci inside, it would work. With a lambda it's complicated, because you define variable, and inside, that's fun, in Scala, for instance, any normal language, okay, any language that I know, by the way, maybe they are different. If I define the variable, I cannot reuse the name of a variable in the symbol. I cannot do recursion in the definition of the variable. Of, of, of. So that's the problem, and basically it's the problem also of the lambda calculus, but there is a trick, Y combinator, which allows me mm, to do something like that. I don't create function. I create something like function uh, factory. It's called G at the moment, just to make it uh, not that easy for you to guess what this function might be. But I am presenting it this way, okay? So what is this function, G? Just ignore the R. R is only needed because of the Y combinator. Take some N, reuses this other lambda, if lambda, if this n was zero, then I'm going to return one. That's a cardinals, it's again, that's a, a constant that I defined with lambdas, returns one with this f and x. Otherwise, it does what? Multiplicates n with r is the, how would we recursive call, call the function g with predecessor of n. Who knows what is this function? It's Factorial, of course. It's not Fibonacci. It's factorial because it's easier. Okay, so anytime you go to the to the to the to this stock, you're gonna apply for a job. If someone asks you for factorial uh, again. Just do it. That's probably the <laughs> the third uh, the third most stupid, most unusable factorial definition. But it works. So 
So I'm going to reuse it. Okay, so, so with this, I created the real factorial. I used Y combinator with G, and right now I have real factorial. Okay? So let me check if it works. Ta dam, ta dam, ta dam. Factorial from A. Okay? So, well, by the way, maybe I will, okay, I will display it later. Okay. So, ta dam, ta dam. So you see, there was A and it was 3, and then I have factorial uh, of 3 and uh, 6. Okay. Seems to be working, but what if I use something uh, bigger number, you know? Like, I don't know, 6. That must be funny. Whoa! For sure it's funny. Then uh, you should count those Fs for me. <laughs> I don't have that much time on this presentation. Okay, well, we can as well spend it counting those Fs. But if I reuse my package, uh, basically what it does, it counts those Fs for me. So we can, you can even check if it counted well. So it's 720. Seems like the factorial from 6. So it's working. So I've showed you that I could represent numbers, calculus, again with only this simple building block, the lambda. That's, that's, a lamb, that's basically the constitutes lambda calculus. And uh, what's more funny, not only the mathematical concept like numbers, also the uh, algorithmic parts. And that's not coincidence, that's not a hack. In fact, it was proven that the lambda calculus is a Turing complete thing. So it's, it was proven probably by even Turing. I have just forgot who has proven that. But what it means, it's like lambda calculus is the, I would say, the most pure, the minimal functional language that you can use. And still in this language you can represent everything because it's Turing complete. So it's like for your colleagues, of course, that don't believe in functional programming, it's a proof, it's a formal proof that everything can be done purely functional. No problem. Because it can, can be even done with a lambda calculus. Imagine what more, how many things easier you can do if you just use the whole scala with Boolean and integer. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. So, and there is another interesting story about it. So, maybe we can hack mathematics. The idea is like, there was this problem. Uh, problem, I would call it holy grail of mathematics. Like, Okay, if we have some theorems in mathematics, it looks typically like that. We have some condition of arguments and then statements. So if something that holds, then we have this fact. So, and that would be nice if we could build a machine that is automatically checking that. That's, that's exactly what 100 years ago mathematic, uh, mathematicians were looking for. Like, let's build a machine that would render us useless. So it's the same as software developers doing artificial intelligence. Like, you, you see, it's the same. But, so if, the, if we could rewrite it as a statement, maybe in lambda, in lambda calculus, it's possible, by the way, there is a way how to represent mathematical statements as simply lambda calculus expressions, uh, lambda expressions, then maybe we have another lambda that we at the end, we just applied it and will say, show us true or false, as defined before. That would be so awesome. Uh, the problem is it doesn't work. And uh, why, why it's not working? If we reuse this, you remember this very unpolite lambda. Do it to yourself. Whenever we use this lambda that's <coughs> built with autocall, so it's like, OK, your autocall are uh, so unpolite that now I do it to you all. Do it to yourself, and I, I call autocall with autocall. And every time this expression appears somewhere and some other lambda is analyzing that, what happens? I can just show you. Oops, sorry, for just a moment. Uh, my mouse stopped working somehow. It happens. Okay. Uh, I can't show you at the moment, I know why. Uh, but the, what will happen is stack overflow error. Because this is a bomb. It's just. It loops infinitely in this uh, in this uh, in this uh, in this uh, area. So now, now you can't do anything with that. And what what's more, so it's uh, it was proven by Church in 1946 that unfortunately this hack won't work. So no computable function can find out if other lambda is simply true or false. 
And might be that you know this fact already. You can, you can think of something very similar uh, theorem. Okay. Nevertheless, on Stack Overflow, there, is a, there are a couple of guys true, trying to, in C-sharp, define a function that takes two lambdas and tests for equality. Exactly the, what mathematicians proven is not possible, but they are really far away with that. So <laughs> might be one day they're, they're going to do that. Okay. They haven't studied math, so it's maybe they will do it. Okay. So the problem is, so set theory, by the way, was proven to not solve the facts, and then the, to not be like that easy that we can build a machine, then the lambda calculus also is not that, so it's very elegant formalism, but unfortunately, it's not that good that we can just take this automat and prove anything with, if we only represent things with lambda calculus. And Kurt Gödel proven something more general that no matter how cool your formalism is, well, you just represent all the numbers with apples, you find some other way, some smart way. There are a lot of ways to do math. Uh, none of those theory will be like, let's say, let's so complete that you can just automatically prove uh, anything. So as long as it's complicated enough to, be, to have arithmetical statements. So just, it's inco incompleteness theory. So sorry, it's uh, whatever you think of. It's proven it won't be great. And for instance, the same is with Turing machine. We can't have a Turing machine that checks if another Turing machine stop holds. Yeah? It's like, this stops. The same problem. So that is more or less I wanted to show you today about all, how was this old stuff built. So what's behind this lambda we are talking about? It's really started with this, with Church, the guy who, let's say, in was like a supervisor of all this group, Clean and other guys. They did it almost 100 years ago, in the 30s. They were looking for the more elegant mathematics, basically. And then they've created, I would say, the minimal computer, com, com, computer language. So I've shown you today only something that it's called untyped lambda calculus. Well, why it's untyped? But, but because what if you say plus uh, false and okay, false would work, but true? and factorial. What is even that? But basically, you can find out it makes sense sometimes. But not all of those expressions would make sense. So it's your, let's, let's say it's your uh, um, duty to make sensible expressions. But there is something like typed lambda calculus, or there are even other lambda calculus that work like typed languages. So they prove for you. It's not, you are not, uh, again, as, as in, for instance, JavaScript. Because this untyped lambda calculus is more or less like JavaScript. It just lets you do everything. So I haven't touched the thing that's very, in fact, complicated, lazy, and eager evaluation. So it's, uh, 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 but it's also funny stuff. If you do lambda calculus on paper, you can see that sometimes it's, you should use eager, sometimes uh, uh, lazy evaluation. There are more such subtle uh, problems. What I haven't shown you, if you look for lambda calculus in Scala, you typically don't find what I've shown you. You will find this. So lambda calculus done of, on type system of Scala, because it's not in a runtime, as I've shown you before, but on a type system, so the compiler does all this calculation, which is awesome, and it sh basically shows you such a nice uh, compile error that you won't even find where, it, where they end. But it's awesome. So that was all I wanted to show you. If you want to go deeper, I made it Wikipedia friendly. So it's, if you go with Wikipedia definition of lambda calculus, all the symbols I used today will be easy. So you just use Scala to prove that what's written in Wikipedia is OK. Uh, you can follow this blog. This is the same done in C-sharp version, so I must uh, uh, credit the guy because, for instance, a couple of things won't be that easy for me if I haven't seen his solution. That's a really great job. Uh, and he goes way, way deeper. He, it's like you can spend a month on two if you are on this topic just reading this block and seeing how it works. We can try it in, with Java or Scala, whatever. Basic, any language will do. Uh, this thing I first done with Java for fun. Of course, I was drinking beer. But nevertheless, it worked. Uh, and then uh, there is a great book I recommend to you. It's not about lambda calculus. It only touches lambda calculus in Perl's new mind. But it's, for instance, describes quite well Kurt's Gödel theorem. It describes, even shows the 
uh, I would say, canonical Turing machine. He, the guy is crazy. So because of that, I like the book. It's very inspiring. So after this book, you can, you can really get on this topic and go farther on your own, explore. Lambda visualization, visualization is just my package. It's really nothing interesting, just. And it's, it, by the way, it's proven it won't work. It only works during the presentation, but you can try. Because it's easy to prove because of the same reason. You can't decide if lambda is true or false, and you can't generally display lambda. But OK, for me, it's good enough. And this presentation was written uh, originally in, in Java, and it's there on this, this tiny URL. And that's all. Are there any questions?